night true Ogeta and welcome once again to another house and home episode viewers this is the last week of the month and so I hope you all are geared up for another hard-working but exciting week but you all need not to worry as house and home will entice your week with fun but informational lifestyle ideas so keep your eyes and ears open now to our lineup for tonight and in no particular order we have Cooking with Goodman Filda, Healthy Minds with Dr. Ambi, another edition of our new segment Snapshot, Shopping with Brian Bell, Animal Plus, and another Chef Roger Cooking Edition. So to begin the night, we have Cooking with Goodman Filda. Enjoy. Good evening viewers and welcome to this edition of Cooking with Goodman Filda. Now tonight I'm going to cook a very simple recipe that you can make at home for you and your family. Now the recipe for tonight is buttered fish. So for our fish we're using some uh, barramundi pieces. For our seasoning and ingredients we have, as you can see, we have an egg, ground pepper, paprika, lemon pepper seasoning, a tablespoon of salt. So as you can see for the flour, I'm using wholemeal uh, flame, plain flour. You can also use the flame flour, which is plain white flour. Now for the cooking oil. Now for a healthier choice, I'm gonna be using Crisco 100% uh, premium sunflower cooking oil. Now this cooking oil contains 30% uh, less saturated fat and also contains a source of omega-6, so it's very good for you. So, for tonight, we're going to start by pouring our oil into the pan. Pop the pan in here. Okay, so now I'm going to add some salt onto the barramundi pieces. Okay, now the next step, we're gonna add all our ingredients onto the flour. So I've got my ground pepper, some paprika, some lemon pepper seasoning, and here we have uh, two teaspoon of salt. Give it a mix. So once the ingredients are all mixed with the flour, then we add in, so I'm using um, soda water. You can use um, any other liquid products that you like, but uh, soda water is always good. So you just want to make sure all the ingredients are all mixed together as well as the flour. So 
So as you can see, I just want all the ingredients to mix together with the flour so we have that consistency. Okay. Okay, so now I'm just gonna add one egg. Now you can always add the egg before or after you mix all the ingredients. Get a whisk. All right, now we're going to add in our fish. So one piece at a time. flour Yep, so now we're going to put this into our hot pan, hot oil. So what I'm going to do now is make sure uh, the fish cooks at least two to five minutes on one side before I turn them over. So like I said, two to five minutes, make sure you're just going to give it that golden brown color. Okay, as you can see, our fish is golden brown. I'm pretty sure it's cooked. So we're gonna start serving our fish. Oh, that's looking beautiful, golden brown. Now, uh, earlier I prepared my salad, so here we have some mixed lettuce with some tomato. So we're gonna start plating. So I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of this uh, balsamic dressing just on the tomato. And we're gonna add some, some lemon. Maybe a squeeze of lemon. And 
And there you have it, your buttered fish with salad. Now this is a very simple recipe that you can make at home for you and your family. Now this can feed up to a family of four. Thank you so much for watching this edition of Cooking with Goodman Filda. Until next time, it's bye for now. And another delicious recipe prepared again by the master chef potential Godwin Eki for cooking with Goodman Filder. Viewers, there's more trusted brands for cooking found at Goodman Filder International. So pay them a visit. And remember, viewers, good friends, good food, Goodman Filder. Coming up after the break, we join Dr. Ambi for more of her insights into living a productively healthy and positive lifestyle. As mentioned before the break, now we have Dr. Ambi for another wonderful edition of Healthy Minds with Dr. Ambi. This is Healthy Mind with Dr. Ambi, proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. Welcome to our beautiful a healthy mind show once more with our house and home well viewers we talked about last week on the someone with the seizures or fits in the in pigeon you may talk talk all same lower sick guria well we know that sick guria is a common problems which uh, adults go through and it's a continuous session from the last week to get to understand a bit more into uh, sick guria and how now you can identify and manage and some tips how we can help our loved ones so what will i talk about that is a sick guria you you may save penis and come up also using that behavior changes and the con uh, you become uh, conscious uh, goes down for a few minutes now you care up now you know not save where what happened and then so meanwhile a lot of things have been going on to fitting and other issues well many time we want to know is epilepsy it's another name for sick guria is epilepsy is ep it's epilepsy is a mental illness well i must say it is not a mental illness it's actually caused by electrical changes in your brain and also that epilepsy is often considered as a mental health problem because many a time we think that there it is caused by witchcraft or supernatural things and that is one of the norms we have which i'm not going in but on the other hand there are physical illnesses also can cause mental health issues and and epilepsy does have an impact to become mentally unhealthy and associated with the suicidal thoughts or anxiety major psychosis these are major mental illnesses these are all associated with the thing so it is highly associated with the neurology and psychiatry that's what we become important to look into the issues of someone who has got uh, epileptic fit or sick guria well i also said in the last time it is caused by head injuries or bleeding in and alcohol withdrawal or any infections like tb and malaria or tapeworm or meningitis can cause uh, fit and also aids brain tumor and low blood sugar and severe kidney failure or liver failure all that are something can trigger 
So at this uh, moment, we want to know, is telling and uh, uh, how do you know? We know that there are three types. That one of them is a historical. That means conversion. It is a psychological origin itself that fit, but it is not true through fit yet. So plenty old man by asking, how do you know? And through through fit now, you know through you know through through fit. Like time you go. What one thing I have to say? It is important for you to take this person to the doctor because time you go to the doctor and by making correct diagnosis. So for little tips for you and I to understand it is not fainting fainting is totally different from sick guria okay faint and you faint that's all now you care up now guria got narpla narpla impact to stop so the epileptic seizures or guria is one of the patterns that described like mitokosem uh, you know you get stiffness and guria and I lose conscious about in the historical or conversion guria you know through through guria you know not lose uh, conscious at all number two if you are real guria you will have cyanosis cyanosis means your tongue turns to blue because of lack of oxygen and you will see tongue bites and frothing and self injury in about but in the um, you know through through guria or some conversion or hysterical you know not looking people with the hysterical guria will be having they don't lose conscious but in the other one there is you lose conscious sometimes the same person may have hysterical and also through through guria so Time all this life, it's important that you and I go to the hospital to exactly find out what is it and how we could help. Well, I have to tell you something. We, what can we do and how can we deal is to, first of all, take the patient to the doctor because these people, they need medication, they need correct diagnosis, they need proper investigation. So what can we do immediately to the people who have guria and all pulled down, now they are, you know, gone off. So what can you do and how we can advise the person who has got guria and the family? I love to elaborate on it so that we can go home with some good knowledge on epilepsy. Healthy Mind was proudly brought to you by Telecom PNG Limited. Thank you, Dr. Ambi, for that delightful insight. And I hope you viewers have taken down some very important notes made mention during the segment because I certainly have. All right, when we come back after the break, we take a look at what Brian Bell has in store for tonight. So stay watching. Welcome back. Now take a look at what our good friend Leon Gawi has in store for more of Shopping with Brian Bell. Good evening and welcome to Shopping with Brian Bell. I'm your host, Leon Gawi. So tonight, we check out some of our quality products that can help you clean your yard. Whether you're a professional landscaper or if you're just looking to clean your yard, Brian Bell has the products for you. We have grass knives, axes, chainsaws, weeper sniffers, and lawn mowers that can help you do the job. Our geographic location has a lot to do with the weather and the type of vegetation we have. And in PNG, we generally have two types of weather conditions. Rainy weather, when it rains a lot, and sunny weather, when it's more sunny and not as much rain. Now apart from the Highlands region, where it's a lot colder, everywhere else in PNG experiences those two types of weather systems. This tropical climate generally means that it's more humid, because there's a lot of rainfall and a lot of sunlight. And this is perfect for plants to grow. Lately, we've been receiving some sunlight and a lot of rain. Now this is good because it's going to make your yards a lot greener 
It'll give you a lot more grass, more bushes and more trees. You need the proper landscaping tools to keep this in control. So check out our humble grass knife. This knife is specifically designed to cut grass with the blade bent at an angle, making it easier on your back while using. Now if you're time conscious but still need to cut your grass, then our Hyundai grass cutters are your best choice. With its 43cc two-stroke engine, it's economical with fuel consumption, allowing you to do a lot more with minimal fuel input. It's made from tough, durable metal, but at the same time, it's light and easy to carry and maneuver. The cool thing about these grass cutters is that they're easy to maneuver. You can move them around corners, around garden features, tree stumps, light poles, clotheslines. Basically, you can move them around anything. It can also reach those tough areas like under low post houses and in tight squeeze areas like behind a fence. With its easy to carry strap, it can be slung around your shoulders and work will be done in no time. For the more heavy duty work, like cutting branches or trees, see our Hyundai chainsaws. Trees provide shade from the sun and are resourceful with the fruits and branches for firewood. However, these branches can also be hazardous if they are not trimmed or pruned. They can easily grow into power lines and over your houses. Now you don't want no branches falling on you when you're relaxing in your backyard. You need to take preventative measures before any of these hazards actually turn into an accident. Now an excellent example for this is the rain tree. It's big and strong, but with some rain and wind, it becomes so fragile. Now this may damage your property, like your car or your house. Or to make it worse, it can even hurt your loved ones, like your children or your missus. Now to prevent this, Brian Bell has this Hyundai chainsaw. It's perfect for cutting branches or trees. It has a durable jagged chain edge that is designed to do the job. And its 24 inch cut length covers a wider range. It's tough and has a strong carry handle for carrying and cutting. A great companion for your Hyundai chainsaw is an axe. And Brian Bell stocks a great range of quality axes that can help you with that. Now, yes, your chainsaw has done the job and it's cut down pretty much the whole tree. But you still need to clean that mess in your backyard because you don't want to be inviting no critters around your yard. Who knows what's going to be in there? Ugh. Our egg door axes are made in Sweden and are of the highest standards. They come in the 800mm blade and the 700mm blade. You can buy complete with the wooden handle or just the axe head to fit onto your handle. Now who doesn't like fresh cut grass? And what better way to cut your lawn than with your own lawnmower? And not just any lawnmower, but this Victor lawnmower. Victor Lawn Keeper 500. Victor also comes under the Briggs & Stratton brand. Now Briggs & Stratton pride themselves on the fact that their lawnmowers start every time within five pulls. These lawnmowers are no different. This lawnmower has adjustable levers for different types of cut you can perform. It's durable and economical with its four-stroke engine. It comes kitted with a catchment to collect the grass, thus minimizing the need to rake your yard after your cutting. Now an added advantage about purchasing any of these lawnmowers from us is that it's backed up by Brian Bell's service and guarantee. And once you're done cutting your lawn, then you can simply move to your neighbor's house and cut their lawn, for a decent price of course. These machines are easy to maintain and effectively do the job. So as you've seen tonight, Brian Bell has you covered when it comes to landscaping. We have great lawn mowers, grass cutters, chainsaws, grass knives and axes that effectively do the job. It's also backed by Brian Bell's great service and quality. And always remember, great prices, great products. That's Brian Bell. Good night and God bless. Thank you, Leon, for that delightful info on landscaping, and I believe all of us need some of those handy products. So viewers, you can turn to Brian Bell simply because you can and will be backed up by Brian Bell's service and guarantee. And remember, viewers, great products, great prices, that's Brian Bell. There's more coming up after the break.
Now we have Teresa Miria showcasing what Snapshot has in store for another edition. Enjoy. Hi everyone, this is Snapshot. I'm Theresa and thank you for joining me. Well, this is a continuation from last week's edition with Tinzi. Tinzi talked about rompers and flannels. Well, both are just perfect for the season, no mistake. Anyways, for this bit, I will be showing you two different types of my favorite summer outfit. Now let's see what the combinations are. Here's the first one. I chose this black and white dress. It's more like a skirt sewn to a blouse. It's my personal favorite because of the color combination and I regard it as a near fancy summer outfit. I found it very comfortable in it because of the difference it has between the top and the bottom part. The top part of the dress is thin and transparent which is good and not extremely stuffy. You wouldn't want to wear a peewit black dress in the sun. That's why I say the white color delights and saves the outfit from being disregarded as a summer outfit. The bottom part of the dress is floppy and definitely complements the upper part of the dress. My summer appearance is finally completed by this pair of flats I bought at Cherish within the Vision City Mega Mall. This is undeniably presentable, beautiful and comfortable to wear. For my second outfit, I chose a pretty looking silky and a see-through top to go together with a long cotton pants. The color of the top is just perfect and looks more balanced with the long pants. Well, if you decide to wear long pants, make sure the fabric is not too thick, but yeah, it fits you well so that you don't find it uncomfortable all along. As you can see, I applied a cute pink scarf to go together with my outfit. And if you decided to apply a scarf, make sure it doesn't have to be tight, but it's loose. And it's optional whether you want to apply that or not, it's up to you. There you go viewers, that was my two different types of summer outfit, a near fancy outfit and something more regular for you to choose for yourself. It's optional, it's up to you to choose for your summer outfits. Alright, don't forget to keep an eye out for Snapshot next week. I'm Theresa, goodbye. Well, aren't you a fashionista, Teresa? That was absolutely colorful and, might I say, very informative. Your outfits are great. And viewers, to know more about the outfits seen tonight or shown previously, visit the House and Home tab on MTV Online. There's more coming up after the break, so do not leave that. Welcome back. We have Teresa once again for another edition of Animal Plus. Man, that Teresa just keep popping up everywhere, but of course she is talented. Anyway, let us take a look at what she has discovered for another edition of Animal Plus. Hi everyone, this is Animal Plus with House and Home. I'm Theresa Miria and it's so good to be back again here at the Port Mosby Nature Park. Always active and ever devoted to promoting Papua New Guinea's amazing flora and fauna. And the fact that they keep coming up with more educational programs with the aim of combating cruelty and animal trafficking. Now let's find out what we'll be looking at for this bit. Alright, if this is your first time watching Animal Plus with House and Home, 
Mr. Bebe is one of the education officers here at the Port Mosby Nature Park and he's been so helpful in identifying Papua New Guinea's native wildlife. Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Place. Uh, on this episode, we're gonna look at one of the um, freshwater turtles, and it's called the uh, red-bellied. And I have with me my friend here. Um, I'm going to pick uh, Shelly up. Uh, we, we give names to animals here at Port Mosby Nature Park, and therefore here, I have Shelly with me, and I'm going to pick Shelly up for us to see um, how Shelly looks like, okay? And Shelly is a freshwater turtle. Um, so this is Shelly. Um, Shelly is a female um, red-bellied, uh, New Guinea red-bellied freshwater turtle, as you can see here. Uh, the pl plastron here is the shell here that is called plastron. It's red in color. And this side of the turtle here is called uh, carapace. Okay. And the whole body is attached to these two shell. And this turtle here is, um, is found in freshwater and lakes. And also you can find these ones, these freshwater turtles in, um, uh, in the swamps. They have a web feet here. Now this feet here, as you can see here, Shelly has a web feet and um, it helps them to swim in water. And also when they come out of water, because they are reptiles, they come from the family of reptiles, they like to sunbath. Um, to increase the body temperature because reptiles, one fact about reptiles is that they need energy from external sources to increase the body temperature. So Shelly has a web feet here and it helps Shelly to swim in water. In the wild, Shelly feeds entirely on insects and um, berries or uh, some plants and it's referred to as uh, Shelly is an uh, omnivorous uh, reptile. Uh, so it feeds entirely on uh, insects and um, berries. The, the status of this reptile here in the wild is um, there's a healthy population in the wild, but due to the mortality rate in the wild, they have uh, fall prey to the other sources like uh, predators in, in the natural habitat like crocodiles, snakes, uh, monitor lizards, and also including human beings. Human beings, they kill this um, reptile for uh, uh, this, this animal here. And this animal here in the ecosystem, they play a very important role in the ecosystem. They are referred to as uh, cleaners and they also clean the waterways for us human beings. We human beings, we cannot do that, but these uh, creatures here, they do that for us and they are special animals uh, that, do, that does that for us. And um, my message to you viewers out there, especially adults or children. You're coming to Port Mosby Nature Park, enjoying the programs here, and looking at the beautiful animals and the fascinating animals that we kept here at uh, Port Mosby Nature Park. It's really important, and what, I have two messages here to give you. And one is, please do not buy animals when they are being sold on the streets. Uh, it is called animal trafficking, and locals around Port Mosby, and I believe some parts of the country, they are not realizing that some of these animals here, they play a very important role in the ecosystem. And when we buy animals, we are encouraging them to bring the animals out from the wild, which I believe it's the best place where they live in and they breed. And therefore, please do not buy animals. Because when you buy animals, that is called animal trafficking. You are encouraging animal trafficking indirectly. And number two, uh, do not buy bush meat because when you start buying bush meat, meaning animals, the wild animals that are sold on the markets here in Port Mosby or around the country, you are encouraging people from bringing the animals out. So this is my message to you out there viewers, please, if you come to the market or if you see someone selling animals on the streets, please do not do these two things. Uh, from me here at Port Mosby Nature Park and Shelly here, the New Guinea red-bellied um, freshwater turtle, uh, it's bye for now.
Well, for tonight's cooking with House and Home, House and Home has more of Chef Roger's delicious cooking recipe. So watch and be amazed. <laughs> Today I'm going to do some um, local kai kai. I'm going to do some uh, fried sago with fresh tuna and kangkung. I got um, chopped onions here and garlic. I got some fresh garlic as well and some ginger and uh, fresh tuna here and uh, my sak sak and uh, some um, coconut milk. So I want to talk about um, tumbuna salt. Tumbuna salt is um, obviously ancient time thing which has started here and this one here it is actually from Yawa banana skin so it is been um, dried for three weeks in the sun and uh, once you dry in the sun it actually goes black like almost burnt and after that you use a coconut husk and get some water and pour the water onto the banana skin and strain it and if you want more salt you get some salt water from the sea and um, this is actually inland uh, tumbuna salt so if you have any one talks in the coastal area you can ask them to bring some um, sea water and uh, they can um, help you out with the sea water to get some tumbuna salt then this one here is again uh, tumbuna salt it is actually from the sea water this bit of salt is actually from 20 liter of sea water. So 20 liter of sea water, you take it and you put it in a pot and you reduce it, reduce it, reduce it and it comes like this. So there's another way of coastal people do salt. Then there's another way of uh, doing salt is like the firewood which is floating in the water, sea water. You take that one out and put it under fire and burn it but don't make ash. And again, the same process of the other tumbuna salt. Get some water and put on a coconut husk and strain it. And uh, you get um, salt from there. The Highlands region, they got a different one, which is um, comes from a rock, which is a bit of brownish color, which is also very precious as well. They also trade that one for pigs as well. Okay, now I'm going to start uh, my sak sak. And what we do is we fry the sak sak first. Fry it dry. Just stir it up a bit. Probably about kind of two, three minutes. And uh, in the meantime, I'll slice some garlic for me. You can try this at home. It's available in the market freshly. So my sak sak is almost fried now. I get that onto the bowl again. Now what I'm going to do is get the coconut milk into the pan. And I get the fish in there. This is a fresh tuna I use, but you can also use um, canned tuna as well. And fish doesn't take much time to cook. While fish is cooking, I get the other stuff ready.
Okay, kangkung is um, it's called water spinach, water cress. You know, it's freely available everywhere. And kangkung, you can always kind of break it up like this. And uh, kangkung is pretty good. And it's always available in the market. So just break it up. And add into it. You can cut it as well if you want to, but and give it a bit of a stir. Now I want to add this uh, garlic into that. Garlic we don't add uh, in the first um, instant because it normally burns. And a little bit of um, onions. Some ginger to spice it up. I'll use this salt here. Maybe a little bit of this one as well, why not? Give it a stir again. Fish is almost cooked. And a bit of um, pepper, cracked pepper. All right. I'm going to put this um, fish onto this. And uh, little bit of suck suck here and to get some color and spice this chili is um, dynamite so it's not for the faint-hearted and seeds are more hotter than the skin. And a bit of garnish there. And this is um, fried sak sak, Chef Roger style. Thank you for that wonderful addition, Chef Roger. Sago is one of my favorite starch foods, and I really did enjoy that recipe. And viewers, I know you all did as well. Well, time has caught up with us, but as always, it's been a pleasure having you all on board tonight. And if you've missed out on watching the previous episodes, including parts of tonight's show, you can simply visit MTV online website to view them all on the House and Home Programs tab. And always remember, viewers, that there's more you can get out for your home and lifestyle improvements when you tune into House and Home every Tuesday. I'm Mark Goyna Jr. Enjoy the rest of your MTV viewing. Good night. We care about improving lifestyles. It's all about the better man for your life with house and home.